Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one. As you can see here on my channel, last video I filmed my September TBR. It included five books. That was actually a lot of fun to film and it got me really excited to read the books that I'm interested in reading for the month of September. Disclaimer, September is like marks the end of summer but I've been kind of over summer for a while now so I am already in my fall era and I'm very much interested in reading fall aesthetic books. I know that for fall readers like to read mystery thrillers, uh, suspense horror books that I've never really read suspense or horror books but since I am in the mood to read like a thriller novel that is one of the books I'm going to be talking about today but for today's video as you can tell from the title it's going to be a reading vlog I do not know how long this reading vlog is going to last I would like to think a week but we're gonna see how it goes but for today's video I have certain books on my immediate TBR that I would like to read now two of the books that I would like to read in this video I did mention in my last video so I'm not gonna talk about them too much one of the books is unravel me by Tahiri Mafi this is book two of the shatter me series this book is where you follow Juliet and Adam after time in the reestablishment, this is where you follow them in the underground cave with other people who have similar abilities supernatural abilities just like Juliet I want to get further into this series after this book I do have the novella Night Me and she has Tahiri Mafi has two novellas in that one book itself I hope that makes sense the novella that's in that book is Fracture Me and that book takes place after Unravel Me. So if I read this book in this video, I will definitely be reading Fracture Me after. The next book on my list is Sarah J Maas's Crown of Midnight. It's from the Throne of Glass series. It is book two as well. One of my reading goals for the year of 2023 is that I want to be able to reach halfway into the Throne of Glass series. I really did enjoy Throne of Glass. It was one of my favorite reads of this year. I was genuinely and pleasantly surprised by the entire premise of the book. I really, really, really like Selena as a protagonist. I would like to see where this story goes. I don't really know what to expect from this book other than the fact that she in this book is the king's champion her and dorian the crown prince their relationship is not that great they're not romantic with each other kaol is her friend i don't really know what else to expect i know that she's just gonna be faced with difficult decisions and she's gonna probably learn about herself more i would like to learn more about selena there is something that you discover in book one that I hope we dive into a bit more in this book. Now the next book, the third book, is actually not a book that I spoke about in the last video. I am very much a mood reader, but the third book that I would like to touch upon in this video is a psychological thriller. The book is called The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. This book is when she just became a new housemaid for a family of three, a husband, a wife, and their daughter, and notices that the wife is a little weird. Throughout her time of being there, the wife tends to tell false lies of her daughter, and the housemaid takes care of the daughter. Sometimes the daughter makes messes, for the main character to clean it up. I don't know the main character's name. But yeah. I also don't know how old the daughter is. But then on top of all of this, the husband seems depressed in this book. He doesn't seem happy in his marriage or he doesn't seem happy to be 
in this family in general and before the main character realizes it she notices that her room in her house because she does live with the family her room in her house only locks from the outside by the time she realizes it's too late i'm i'm not sure what to expect but i'm very intrigued and i've been wanting to read this book for about two months now and <laughs> It sucks because I might even start with this book. I do have it on my Kindle. Typically when I read on my Kindle, I read a lot faster. But that's pretty much it. That's the really the three books that I think I'll touch on, touch for the majority of this video. I have some errands to run. I have to run to Target really quick. And today I have to wash my hair. So that's why I look like an egg right now but i would like to get a lot of reading done today i think i will be able to do that with the housemaid we'll see how the video goes i really hope you guys enjoy it and let's get into it <laughs> update i have been reading for a little over an hour i reached chapter seven in the book that's about page 40 on my kindle and book starting out pretty good i my attention's there i'm not completely loving it so far but there's still a long way to go i believe from what i on my kindle it says that the book is 350 pages long so i'm only 40 pages in there's a lot of content that I will read about, but it's starting out good. I'm intrigued. So the book basically starts out with Millie, our main character, who is the housemaid. She is living in her car. You find out that she was in prison for the past 10 years and you're following her in the present time where she's struggling to find a job. She's living in her car. She eats the same sandwich three times a day. She's very tired of it. And since she does have a history of being in prison for the past 10 years, she is struggling to find a full-time job, especially since if the job does a background check on her and they do find out that she was in prison, they won't hire her. But you do start out the book with Millie having an interview with Nina Winchester. So the book follows Nina being the housemaid of the Winchester family. Millie gets the job. She's very happy about it because she even misses the feeling of being able to stretch out her legs in the backseat of her car when she's sleeping. That's just sad. To think about like you even miss that having a bathroom that's close to you you won't have to worry about holding it or like she says holding mace with you when you are trying to do number one or something i read up to the end of her first day on the job and let's just say it was a little rough it wasn't what she expected day one she comes the house is absolutely trash filthy disgusting there's pizza everywhere crumbs everywhere she has to soak food off of a table in order to clean it dishes are piled everywhere it's so bad that it's like i could visualize it in my head but it's like 
I could never have my house look like this ever, 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 ever. And when Millie came for the interview, Mrs. Winchester, the house didn't look like this. It was spick and span. She, Millie said herself, she could eat off the floor. Now it's like, I'm afraid there's going to be a rat there if, if food falls on the floor. So Nina spends seven hours cleaning. Could not be me. Could not be me. And then she has to cook because Nina's asking her, when are you going to cook? When's food going to be done? Nina cooks. Um, the daughter, Cecilia, Nina's daughter, Cecilia, she's a little weird one. She reminds Millie of like a scary doll. Think of like Chucky, but like she has piercing blue eyes. She has super, super blonde, almost white hair. She wears white dresses. So it's like those type of scary children that you would cast for a horror movie. That's what the daughter looks like. Cecilia comes into the kitchen, asks, tells Millie that she's hungry. Millie offers her a snack because Cecilia doesn't know what she wants to eat. Okay, that's kids for you. Cecilia makes her uh, like peanut butter and banana crackers. Cecilia says, I'm allergic. Like, I could die if I eat peanut butter. She runs to Nina, her mother, and tells her that Millie was trying to force her to eat peanut butter crackers knowing that she was allergic. Nina never told Millie that she was allergic, so she never would have offered it to her if that was the case. Nina lies to Millie and says, I told you she was allergic. Why would you give it to her? Millie has to basically apologize, and Nina overlooks it, but she says, you can't forget this. Not a great first impression for your first day. And when the daughter and mother are lying to your face, or lying in your presence. The only per nice person in this home is basically the father. The father, Andrew Winchester, he is very nice to Millie, but so nice that Nina seems jealous. And it seems like her eyes narrow, her, her face changes, her demeanor changes. Then at night, it's, her, Millie, it's Millie's first night sleeping in the house, her door, she thinks that her door locked in the middle of the night and she's paranoid. She feels like she's locked in prison again. She feels like alone and she can't call for help because her room is in the attic of the house and it's so dark up there and her room is basically like a broom closet. It's so tiny. And then she has like a tiny little square window that doesn't even open and she can't escape from like, shh. and there's claw marks on the side of the door that the room is in, if that makes sense. As if someone was trying to claw their way out of the room. This is like a horror movie galore. So that's how her first day has gone. For now, I'm gonna put down the book, even though it's getting really good and like my, my attention's there, but my iPad is dying. My headphones are dying. And my camera did die at one point. And I gotta wash my hair. I have to do other work and just chores. So we'll probably pick this back up tonight. But if I don't pick it up again tonight, I'll probably pick it up again tomorrow. I do have a full-time job, so when it comes to reading, I might not get as much done in a full week or however long this video is gonna last. But that is the plan so far but i'll see you guys when i see you all right everyone quick update it has been some time since i last spoke to you last time i spoke to you that was two days ago that was day one of this reading vlog it is day three now i made tiny progress on reading yesterday i read very late at night so that's why i didn't film it i read up to 100 pages into the housemaid today i haven't done any reading it is about 10 o'clock at night so i'm finally picking up my kindle or my tablet and continue continuing to read again tonight from what i can remember um, Maddie 
has been at has been working for the Winchesters for about a month now. She hasn't had the greatest ex experience. She doesn't really like Cecilia, the daughter, and Nina. She makes excuses for Nina, but Nina hasn't made her experience at work the greatest. In fact, Nina has made her life harder and a bit more compli her, her work task more complicating than it really needed to be. And again, I don't want to give anything away, but Andrew, the husband, is pretty much the only person that's nice to her. Yes, Maddie does speak to the gardener, but the gardener doesn't really know any English. And now that Maddie is working for Nina, he's like seasonal point and warning her of staying at the house anymore. He was warning her to not come and work for the family. Now that's not the case anymore. It seems that the gardener Enzo, that's his name, he is afraid of Nina to some degree. That's just the way the story is going right now. It's really, it's still very interesting. I'm not like in love with it right now. This one is keeping my attention, but I find myself getting a little bored at certain points. A part of me wonders if I'm just not in the mood for a thriller or if it's something else. I might be in the mood for a romance, so we'll see if we end up picking up that book later on in the vlog. But I'm going to continue on with The Housemaid for right now. I'll see you guys in the next clip. to kill this girl, Cecilia. I could not deal with a child like her. Oh my God. She is so bratty. Like the way um, Maddie puts it. Oh my God. I could not deal with a child like her. She is so unruly. Like she's proper, but she's unruly and she has no manners. Is she? Oh my god, and disrespectful. <sighs> Moving on. <sighs> okay, I'm updating you before I go to bed. Because <laughs> we've reached that time. It's too late for me now. I've read up to page 143, so about 150 pages. Not terrible. So, on my Kindle, I'm 43% into the book. And, oh my god. It has gotten so good. It has gotten so good. And I'm hooked now. Needless to say, I'm hooked. And I don't want to stop reading right now. But of course, I have work tomorrow, so that's fun. I have reached... I can't give so too much away. I really want other people to be able to enjoy this book. But remember when I said that... I felt like I wasn't in the mood for a thriller. I was in the mood for like a different kind of book. Possibly a romance. That's all I'll say. But, but, I think we've reached the end of that little genre change for the time being. What I can say is that Cecilia has gone to summer camp. Nina went with her um, to drop her off and she had to stay overnight for, for something. So she was going to be away for a day. Pretty much just Millie was going to be in the house by herself for the time being. We haven't seen Enzo for some time. And Andrew has been very nice to Millie. Things are going to get rocky now. And let's just say, because Millie didn't take out the trash one night... Nina's going to notice things might get tracked and 
it's gonna be just a rocky rocky situation from today going forward i'm excited i i don't know where i have an idea where the story could go but at the same time i don't really know what to expect i plan on picking the book up again tomorrow tonight was a success i really enjoyed what i've read and i will see you guys tomorrow it is the next day i think from the last time i spoke to you last night i continued reading the handmaiden or the handmaid how did i forget this name the handmaid i continued reading the handmaid and i actually made a lot of progress on it i read a little over 100 pages yesterday so i got up to page 236 so i am on page i'm on chapter 46 I have about like 90 pages left in the book, so I do plan on finishing the book today. I at least want to like start or get into a second book during this vlog, but I'm glad I made that much progress on The Handmaid because I kind of want to move on to another book, but I'm not the type of person that likes to stop a book halfway or I like to finish a book, so it's kind of a bad thing, but we're just going to like run with it we're gonna figure out what book i'm gonna pick up next i would like to pick up crown of midnight by sarah jane mass the only thing about that book that is pushing me away from picking up that book is the fact that if i read that book i want to annotate it i've gotten into the habit of annotating all of my fantasy books or like series just so that in case I take a break like how I have taken a break from Throne of Glass. If I want to pick up the series again and continue reading it, I can refresh my memory on the plot or sometimes the romance or sometimes the just character relationships or like the main character's growth throughout the story. So that when I do pick up the next book in the series, I have a general sense of what's going on. If I pick up Crown of Midnight, I do want to annotate. The only thing about that is annotating, it makes me take a little longer to read a book. And I don't really want to take a long time to read a book. I'm kind of picking up books that are a little shorter right now. So we're going to see how it goes. We're going to see how I feel once I finish The Handmaid. But today, we are going to finish this book. Let's get into it. <laughs> guys <laughs> long time no see i finished reading the handmaiden by frida mcfadden i'm just gonna give my like last thoughts about the book i really enjoyed the story the twist at the end wasn't exactly one that i was expecting but i do have to say that the way the story twisted in a sense i wasn't too surprised about all i will say is that things seemed too good to be true millie i liked her as a character she really tried her hardest to be the best housemaid possible she tried to make nina happy she received like some comforting words and had like nice conversations with andrew 
And then she had like tough moments with Cecilia as well. It's hard to say something when it comes to thrillers, especially psychological thrillers, because uh, you want to be able to experience the story for yourself. There are twists at the end. Thrillers, I feel like you're on a you're in a different ball game to say the sense. Um, I wasn't too surprised at the way things twisted and I like how at one point throughout the book I did get Nina's perspective. I hate to say it but I kind of enjoyed reading from her perspective more than Millie. Not saying that Millie's perspective is bad but getting Nina's perspective really like put me in the story and made me feel for Nina as a character, Millie as a character and you really give a whole world sense of what kind of community they're in, what kind of people they're being surrounded by, and how the world works in a sense. That's really it. I didn't love the book. I didn't hate the book. I might read the second book in the story. I think I will. Typically, if I start a series, I have to finish it. It takes a lot for me to not finish a series. Now I'll give my rating at the end of the video because I'm not entirely sure what I want to rate it. You also saw in the last clip that I started reading Unravel Me by Tahiri Mafi. I did not get far. I got what 14 pages in? I think it was like yeah 14 pages. All we know so far is that she doesn't really feel welcome. She feels alone she just feels trapped in a sense she feels lost she feels unwanted not by necessarily the closest people around her but just by people that she doesn't really know and the majority of the people that she is surrounded by i'm going to continue reading it let's see how this goes that's really it i'll see you guys bye <laughs> Thank you.